Hi. Well, it's good to see you again. I know you've seen me at the end of all of the little skits there in the fire department and appreciate you being with us on this last uh, day of Bible school, uh, at least the last of the lessons. Uh, I hope it's been a blessing. I hope you've learned a lot of good things. I know uh, I have. I've got a chance to sit in and listen on all of the lessons that you've heard this week. And so I've learned a lot and I pray that you have too. It's so good to have you with us again. My biggest prayer is, is that if you started out this week and you didn't know Jesus as your savior, uh, that you've already taken care of that. That you've asked Jesus to come into your heart and forgive you of your sins and become uh, the Lord of your life. Uh, if not, you've still got plenty of time. Well, today as we're talking through this lesson, uh, but I do encourage you that you don't wait. If you know you need to be saved and you've not asked Jesus to come into your heart yet you, and you know you do need to be saved, don't wait because you never know what's going to happen. Uh, one of the things that we're going to, you know, we, this whole theme this week has been about fires and there have been people that they went to bed one night and the fire started in their house and they never would have expected that they was going to have a fire. Uh, and so you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, so if you know you need to ask Jesus to be to come into your heart and be your savior, then don't wait. Maybe you can stop this video right now and you can talk to your mom and your dad or your grandma or your grandpa or papa or mama or whatever you want to call them uh, and ask them to help you ask Jesus to come into your heart. And if you're here and you know that you're saved, but if you've listened to all of the lessons, you kind of understand and you kind of realize that maybe I'm not doing the things that I ought to do then you can pray to, uh, to Jesus to ask him for help in doing those things too. Uh, whether it's all the steps of the ladder that you learned about uh, uh, on Wednesday, or whether it's the different pieces of the armor that you learned about yesterday, uh, you can do any of those. Uh, you can add any of those things uh, to your life to become better, a better Christian and the kind of person that will bring honor and glory to Jesus. But today we're going to look at one other little piece of this and 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 this to me is probably one of the most uh, important things for us as believers to know. Uh, you know, when people are in danger, uh, firefighters will do whatever it takes to try to help somebody. If they're trapped in a car, they'll use uh, big equipment to rip the car open so that they can get them out of the car. Or uh, if they're in a, a building and it's burning, they'll go into the building, even with it on fire just trying to help get people out uh, because they don't want anybody to die and they want to make sure they do everything that they can uh, to help them, help them and they never quit. They'll keep on and keep on and keep on and to the very last possible second to do that. Now, uh, you know, when you think about that for a minute, that would have to be a little bit scary. I mean, you're standing outside of a great big burning building and you hear somebody call for help. Maybe it's a home and you hear somebody crying. Maybe it's a kid. Maybe it's an older person. And you know if you go into that building that maybe you're going to get hurt. And man, that, that's scary. I don't care who you are. That would have to be scary. But they still do it anyway. They know that it's scary, even and even though they're afraid. Even And, and, and anybody who tells you that as a firefighter or uh, even as a policeman or anything else, that there are times that they're afraid, trust me, there are times when it scares them. Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it's not a big deal to be a fireman. Sometimes it's not a big deal. I was talking to a fireman today, as a matter of fact, and he worked all night last night. And believe it or not, they didn't get one call to go out and help one person. And so he got to sleep at the fire hall all night long. Um, so he had a really good night. That wasn't a scary day. But then... On the other hand, not too awful long ago, not far from where I lived, a plant caught on fire. And they had to answer that call. And they didn't know what they were going to get into there, whether it was people that was going to be hurt because it was an explosion. And they didn't know whether people was going to be hurt or whether they were going to get hurt. And, and you know, it might be good to sleep one night, but you know sometime or another you're going to run into something that's going to really scare you and make you worry and, uh, even as you're going in. And, you know, and, and that's true of every firefighter. And the truth of the matter is, you are a firefighter. Now, you may be sitting there going, I don't think so. I don't have the helmet, and I don't have the coat, and I don't have the boots, and I don't even have a fire hose. But you're still a firefighter. Because you know that everybody, when they die, is going to go to one of two places. If they know Jesus is Savior, they're going to go to heaven. 
And that's a great thing. But you also know that if they die and they don't know Jesus as Savior and they never ask Jesus into their heart, that they're going to go to a place where fire is very real. And unlike a fire here on earth, you know, if you try hard enough and you work hard enough and you throw enough water on the fire, eventually that fire is going to go out. But this fire never goes out. The Bible says in Revelation 14 that the fire burns forever. And that person who ends up in that place called hell or the lake of fire, that they burn there forever. And just like people today here on earth need firefighters if their house catches on fire or their car catches on fire or maybe the backyard catches on fire because they shot too many fireworks or something like that. People are glad when the firemen show up to help. And as a spiritual firefighter, you need to be willing to do things, even if it's hard, because you know if that person doesn't ask Jesus to come into their heart, they're going to go, uh, they're going to die, and they're going to go to a place where they're going to burn forever. I mean, think about it this way. If you were walking outside and you were at, and it was late and you had gone over to your friend's house and you could tell that the fire that there was a fire in the in the house wouldn't you holler and wouldn't you scream and wouldn't you yell and wouldn't you blow your car and flash your lights and do all that kind of stuff to try to wake them up so that they would know that their house was on fire of course you would you wouldn't want them to be in that house and burn up so you'd do anything you could to get their attention to help them to see that they, you'd beat on the doors break a window whatever you had to do to get them to see that they needed to get out of that house because it was on fire well, you know how to prevent people from going to hell. You know that the only way to do that is to ask Jesus to forgive them of their sins and to come into their heart and, and, and become the Lord of their life. And the truth of the matter is, everybody that we know, if they don't know Jesus as Savior, everybody we know that doesn't know him is going to go to hell if they die without asking him to be their Savior. So just like you would beat and bang on a door or break a window or blow your horn or holler or scream or whatever you had to do to get their attention if they were in a house that was on fire, you need to do the same kind of thing to help them see the need that they have of not falling into a fire that's going to last forever. Now, just like it's scary to be a fireman, to be honest with you, sometimes it's really scary to be a spiritual fireman too. You know, we don't know what's going to happen. You know, we could talk to somebody about Jesus and they might act like we were stupid. Uh, they might act like we didn't know what we were talking about. They might make fun of us. They might get mad at us because we told them that they that they're that, that, that because of the sin in their life they need to ask Jesus to forgive them. And they might get mad and think, "Well, I'm not a sinner. I'm a pretty good person." And all of those things can be kind of scary because you really don't know how they're going to react when you tell them that they need to be saved. And that they need to ask Jesus to come into their heart. But just like a fireman has to do what he does, even though he's afraid, the truth of the matter is we have to do what we need to do, even though we're afraid. There was a story in Scripture, in the Bible, where some men did that exact, that very same thing. They had a friend, and he was crippled. Now, crippled just means he couldn't walk, he couldn't move. Now today, uh, if somebody can't walk, usually we put them in a wheelchair and we can roll them around or they can, if they've got one of those really cool wheelchairs that's got the handle of the little buttons on it, they can move themselves around, right? Well, in Jesus' day, they didn't have wheelchairs. <laughs> uh, all they had was a cot, a bed that they could carry. And these men, these four men had this friend that was paralyzed. He couldn't move. And they had heard that Jesus was in town and they thought, man, if we can get this guy to Jesus, he can heal him and everything will be fine. And so even though it was hard, they picked him up and they put him in the cot and each one of them grabbed a corner and they carried him through the city to get to this house where Jesus was. 
And the whole time, I'm, you know, I'm sure they were very excited because they knew if they could just get him to Jesus, everything was going to be fine. And they, and the closer they get to where Jesus is, they're hearing a lot of noise and all this kind of stuff. It's like a lot of people. And they round the corner, and all around this house are people. So many people. The house was full. The yard was full. The street was full. It was full. It's just like going to Chick-fil-A at lunchtime. There was people everywhere. And they could not get that man to Jesus. Now that would be hurtful. You really want to do something, and now you can't. Well, for some people, they might say, well, you know, we tried, and they just take him back home. But these guys really, really loved their friend. And they said, man, it doesn't matter. We gotta do something. We've come too far, we're too close now. We gotta do something. And one of them realized and remembered that there's a stairway, a really narrow stairway that would take them up to the roof of the house. Now, first off, they have to fight the crowd. Can you imagine? Excuse me, excuse me, okay, clear away. Excuse me, excuse me. And they're bumping into people and people getting ill at them because they're walking up through there with them and all of this kind of stuff. And people are probably saying, well, why don't you quit? And what do you think you're doing? You know, and all this kind of stuff, embarrassing them, making them feel bad. But they've got their friend. And so they keep going and they keep going and they keep going. And they finally get to the stairway and then they look up at it and they're like, okay, how do we carry this guy up the stairs? It's a narrow stairway. And how do we carry him up the stairs and not drop him? I mean, he already can't walk. They don't want to hit him in the head. But they had to get this man to Jesus. So regardless of how hard it was, regardless of how awkward it was, regardless of how they had to arrange themselves so that they could get this guy up on the stairs, they get to the top of the stairs, and then they get to the roof. And the houses in that day, they had like a courtyard, and then they had the house. So a courtyard is just kind of like an inside yard. Okay, and, and, and then they had the roof of the house. Well, it naturally, Jesus is in the house. And the courtyard is full of people. So they can't, and they don't have ropes. They can't hardly get the guy down there. And they're not really sure what they're going to do. So they still got to try to figure it out. And one of them says, I know. Let's take off the roof. Now, in that day, the houses had a, uh, a roof that was made out of clay. And it would get really, really hard, as, and it would get harder and harder over time as the sun got hit the brick and made it, you know, and dried it out, and made it really, really hard. Well, again, they weren't planning on having to bust out a roof to get this man to Jesus, so I'm sure they didn't bring hammers and chisels and axes and everything else with them. So the only choice they've got is to start using their hands or something that's on top of the roof there to break a hole in the floor. And then they have to take their hands and try to break the rock, this hard rock, this clay rock, off the top of this roof. I guarantee you by the time they took off enough of that roof to drop a man in a bed down to Jesus, I guarantee you their hands were bleeding. I guarantee you their arms were tired. I mean, they've already carried this guy through the town. They've had to carry him through a whole bunch of people. They've had to carry him up a real steep set of stairs. And now they've had to dig a hole just to try to drop him. So they're tired and their hands are bleeding and it's hot. And people are looking up into this hole going, what is wrong with you? So now they feel bad because they tore up this dude's house. But they love their friend. So they clear out enough space. And, you know, by this time, of course, I know Jesus had seen them up there. He knew what they were doing. He's God, so he knew what they were doing all along. But when that when that hole opened up, he sees them up there. And, you know, what's interesting? Jesus didn't look up there and say, hey, guys, stop. Instead, he let them do everything they could to help their friend. Now, I'm not real sure what happened. When they got up there, the, People, in that day, again, people would spend a lot of time up on that roof, and so they must have found some ropes or something. And so they tied the thing together, and they dropped this man down into the, into the house where Jesus is. And Jesus looks at this man, and he says, not just 
at first, the first thing he says to him is he says, your sins are forgiven. Now, there were some other religious people there, and they didn't particularly care about that. They didn't like that because they didn't know and didn't believe that Jesus was God. And they said, nobody but God can forgive sins. What's wrong with you? And Jesus said, well, just so that you know that I have the ability to forgive sins, which means he was telling them I'm God, he said, rise up and walk. Take up your bed and walk. And the guy did it. He got up off of the bed and stood up, grabbed the bed. I figure he probably grabbed Jesus around the neck and gave him a big hug too. He was probably hooping and hollering. And I have no idea what the guys on the roof were doing, but I bet they were just as excited as he was. But what was interesting is, is that Jesus, before he saved that man's life physically, he saved him spiritually. He said, your sins are forgiven. You know, all the men were initially interested in was just trying to make him physically better. But Jesus knew that the bigger problem he had was that he needed to be forgiven of his sins. And because that man had such faith that he would allow his friends to bring him up there and do all of the things they do and not tell them to give up and to quit and all of those kind of things, he said, your sins are forgiven because you had enough faith to believe that I could do this. That's the message you have. You've got friends and neighbors and maybe even family members that you know that they may be that they've never asked Jesus to come into their heart. They've never asked Jesus to forgive them of their sins. And the truth is, that's the biggest problem they have. They need to be forgiven of their sins. So, you know, you're not going to put your friend on a cot and try to carry him to Jesus. Jesus is in heaven now. So what are you going to do? Well, you know, for them, it started out kind of easy. It was just carry the man to Jesus, right? And then they round the corner, and now it's carry the man to Jesus through this massive crowd. And then it was carry this man to Jesus through this massive crowd and up a steep set of steps. And then it was carry this man through the crowd up the steps and tear a hole in the roof. <laughs> and then it was all of those things and drop him down to where Jesus is at. Everything they did, the longer they did it and the more they did it, the harder it got. But they kept doing it. So for you and for me, how do we do it? Well, you start out easy. The easy thing is you start out first and you just pray for them. That's the easiest thing we can do is to pray that one day Jesus would show that person that they need to ask Jesus to come into their heart, that Jesus would save them. So you pray. The next hardest thing might be, though, you know, you pray for a while and you pray for a while, and then all of a sudden you get this feeling that, well, maybe what I need to do is invite them to come to church. Now, that's a little harder because, again, you don't know what they're going to say. They might say, I don't like church. I went one night, and it was boring. I didn't like it. They might say, well, my mom and dad don't go to church, so I don't reckon I got to go. So that's kind of the next hardest thing is to actually invite them to church. Probably the hardest thing, though, and it's just being honest, the hardest thing is to tell them yourself that they need to ask Jesus to come into their heart. See, when you're praying, you're just telling God. When you're inviting them to church, you're hoping somebody at the church will tell them that they need to ask Jesus to come into their heart. But then the hard part, the hardest part is to look them in the eye yourself and say, look, you know, I know Jesus is in my heart and I know that when I die, I'm going to go to heaven. But if you don't know Jesus and you die, you're going to go to uh, hell and you're going to burn forever. That's hard. Because again, you don't know what they're going to say. You don't know how they're going to act. Some of them, it might make them feel good that you loved them that much. But some people it might make really mad because nobody likes to be told that they're doing bad things, right? Not even people who already know Jesus as Savior. We don't like to be told when we're doing bad things. So you know that somebody that's lost in you or that doesn't know Jesus as Savior isn't going to like it. So it's the hardest thing to do. But in most cases, 
it's that kind of thing when we actually are willing to tell people about Jesus ourselves when over time we'll see the most results you know you, you may you may tell 15 people that they need to ask Jesus to come into their heart and only one person does it but that one person doesn't have to worry about hell anymore it's just like digging that hole in that roof it might hurt and it might be painful and it might make your hands bleed but it was worth the effort and the truth of the matter is if just one person doesn't go to hell because you took the time to tell them how to avoid the fire of hell, then it'll be well worth ever how nervous you ever were and how scared you were and how worried about the things that you were. Because Jesus loves everybody. And he loves everybody so much that he sent Jesus to die for their sin so they didn't have to. But then he leaves us here to make sure we have an opportunity to tell them that so that they can go to heaven too. The Bible says in, in uh, Galatians, uh, or excuse me, Jude 22 and 23, it says this, and if some have compassion, making a difference. All that means is love them and tell them about Jesus because it might make a difference in their life. And others save with fear, pulling them from the fire. Sometimes all you got to do is tell somebody you love them and that Jesus loves them and they need to be saved and they do it. Sometimes they don't respond that way though. And even though it's scary, you got to keep telling them as many times as you can and as often as you can. And so that that way eventually they'll see that need too. And that would be the same thing as kind of pulling them out of the fire. So we've learned a lot about firefighters. But I hope you see that you're a special kind of firefighter too. You're a spiritual firefighter. God left you here to help, pe to help pull people out of a fire that's going to burn for eternity. And we need to do it, even if it is a little bit scary. But if we'll do it, then when we get to heaven, the Bible says there's a very special reward for those who took the time to tell other people how to not go to hell. And so you, if you do that, then you'll earn that reward too. I hope you've learned something this week. I hope it's been a blessing. I hope that you've had fun. I know you've had the crafts and you've watched the silly uh, skits uh, with Bernie and Ember and Jake and all of those kind of things. And, and, so I, and I, so I know you've had some fun, but I really, really do hope if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, let me tell you, I love you. And everybody that's been a part of this Bible school loves you. And we would nothing more than for you to ask Jesus to come into your heart. And if you do know Jesus, as your Savior, you've asked him to come into your heart, then I pray that it's because of something that somebody has said this week that you realize you need to try just a little bit harder to do more of what God wants you to do. And maybe that means even asking somebody if they need, if they're telling somebody that they need to have Jesus in, uh, come into their heart too. All right? God bless you. We love you. And looking forward to seeing you after the Bible school is over so you can tell us all about the stuff that you learned. All right. God bless and have a good night.